Welcome in everybody. Here's another little overview for Design 300. This is Section 2, which is about foundations and floors. That's what you do after you do the site work. When the site work is all done and it's graded and it's compacted and it's grubbed and it's trenched, it's time to pour the foundations and floors. The foundations transfer all the loads of the house, the weight, the wind loads, the rain loads, all that kind of stuff. The foundations transfer that into the soil. And of course, the floors are what we walk on. So that comes, obviously, after you've prepared all the dirt. Okay, and this is part one. This is a two-part section. It lasts two weeks. Part one will be the first week. Part two will be the second week. And this is the overview for part one. And so here's our assignment guide. Let's take a look at the goals. As always, it's key terminology and standards. This time we're going to work with detailed drawings, not revisions, but detailed drawings and specifications. We're going to look at a little bit about something called compression testing. It's very important for foundations for concrete that you know that the concrete was poured and everything is working right so that uh, failures don't occur in the future. And as always, we'll do some good resource management. So let's take a look at the resources. On the resources, you'll see that big portions are grayed out. That's what you're going to do in part two. So you can ignore all of that for right now. For part one, you'll see that 2.1.1 key terminology will be up in part one, standards and concrete compression testing. And here's that little note again. Okay, this assignment guide is for part one. You'll get a new assignment guide for part two. And basically, it will be very similar, but these will no longer be grayed out. And uh, a few more videos will be in. Okay, so under key terminology, we have a couple of presentations for you to review. And then something specifically about slab on grade and something specifically about um, raised joists. So this is mostly concrete, 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 more concrete, but how it goes on to a floor. And then we get into some raised floors. For our standards, we're going to change from typical of site work, we had the BMPs. Now we have something called International Residential Codes. Okay, and, and these are, uh, California has its own set of codes. You have to know tons of different codes and depending on who you work for, they will have a different set of codes for you. So the ICC, okay, is a digital storehouse for codes and the IRC, it, chapter four, is a particular code. It's an international residential code. And chapter five is a international residential code. One has to do with concrete and the other has to do with flooring. So uh, you can, or foundations. One has to do with foundations, one has to do with flooring. And so I just want you to be aware of those and get a little bit of work. And then in the concrete compression testing, there's a little presentation on it and then a spreadsheet with some results. Okay, so then we have two playlists uh, to look at. One is about concrete and the other is about raised floors. So what's due, I've decided to give you the visual for this over here. Okay, if you go into the course modules, you'll see work for, and there's two things to turn in, your compression test data and your progress check for your workbook. And in the progress check for your workbook, you should have the pages and the areas for activity 2.1.1, 2.1.2, and 2.3.1. And then there's a discussion board, and it's not graded, but I'd like you to do it. And this is about detailed drawings also. 
And um, I'll go into that in a separate video for you about how you might want to do that. Actually, I'll, I'll put in my own um, reply on that. So there's the, there's the overview of what's in your resources. Of course, the workbook is available for you. Take a look at the workbook. Okay, we've got key terminology and standards. There's going to be a detailed drawing in Revit. It's actually just putting a title on a detailed drawing. Um, master format specs, concrete compression tests, and then your resource management. And what is due this week is 2.1.1, your key terminology. Okay, let's see what else is due. 2.1.2, your standards. So this whole page is due. And then 2.3 is due. 2.3.1, concrete compression testing. Let's see what the, um, the instructions for those are. Again, there's three steps. I don't have any videos for this. It's just study like you did last time. So first, preview the YouTube videos that are in the youth resource guide. Scan the presentations. And which presentations? The ones that go with 2.1.1. And then in your workbook, synthesize your own understanding. And there's nothing to turn in for this other than uh, doing your workbook. Okay, and so this is where, oops, this is where you're going to do that. Okay, nothing really to turn in there. However, here you're going to describe some terms. Use the format provided in the workbook. List the steps used to build with concrete. Okay, that goes right here, concrete pouring process goes right here four steps to it and you can just name those steps if you have some room you can give a brief description but just naming those steps would be at a minimum okay and then synthesize an explanation of a footing and a stem wall footing and stem wall so you'll have a little description right here Okay, and then synthesize an explanation of the difference between slab on grade and joist. So when you do a difference, you first usually say what's the same and then identify a few things that are different. You might say both of these are flooring systems that have an underlayment and a cover and a finish and a vapor barrier the difference is okay so that's how you might synthesize this and it will fit here quite easily okay so you can make it a paragraph or you can put it into a bullet point system and then the third part is to add some images this probably fits two or three images and again remember to make it fit inside this area leave a little bit on each side okay so there's 2.1.1 and 2.1.2 explain what the icc is so you could that's given to you on the resource page and put it in where it's asked for so the icc is and it's considered a reliable source because, okay? And you should be able to get that information from the ICC homepage. And then it asks for IRC chapter four and chapter five. Skim the chapters, like very quickly, sort of read the headings. This class is not about learning all of the standards, but learning that there are many, many standards and how to start working with, um, with how to read them. So skim them and then uh, synthesize an explanation of what each chapter covers. If you cut and paste the whole thing, it will be too big. So you're going to have to break it down and find some keywords and 
and do that. And of course, they're directly related to foundations and flooring. Okay, that's what it says here. And then finally, add some images or an image. Okay, and then our last part, and I will probably give you a video on this, is um, concrete compression testing, uh, a table for your concrete results, and place an image here. Probably we'll do with some, um, oops, I should say compression testing. Sorry about that. But I've given you a I've given you a um, uh, a presentation to read, and I'd like you to synthesize a brief explanation, describe concrete compression testing, and include what does it test, what data is collected, and what data is calculated. When is it done? Where is it done? Who gets to decide if the test was a pass or a fail, and what would happen if it wasn't if it if it failed? And those should all be found in this concrete compression test um, uh, presentation. For the test data, you want to access the data, add your name to the spreadsheet. And every time you type something, it changes all the data. That's okay. I want you to have your own data. And then once you've typed your name, take a snip or a screenshot. And on that snip or screenshot or in your workbook, highlight the results. The results are the area where it has uh, the mean, the max, the min, and things like that. And I'm going to make that a little smaller. I'm seeing some format issues that I've got here as I'm looking at it. I thought I had those all cleared up. Okay, so that goes in your workbook. But then I'd like you to download your file as a PDF and submit it to Canvas. And then place that image in the workbook. That image that you snipped will go here. Okay, and finally, go onto the web and try to find an image of uh, a test being done. So there you go. That is what's due for part one of this, uh, of this um, section two. All right, there you go. Look forward to seeing your good work.